Well, I'd like to welcome everyone. This is a great, perfect October Sunday afternoon for riding around looking at all the eye candy of the fall uh, foliage. Uh, first, I want to thank Munson Art Council. They uh, are hosting the gallery for two weekends, and the gallery is friends and workshop participants and uh, exhibitors, and um, it's, it's a great family. We've been doing this for about 15 years together. Um, I couldn't uh, be here without all of you and uh, <coughs> others who, who aren't here. And uh, The person, I, 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 I can't articulate how they expressed it, but they said to them, photography is spiritual. Photography is capturing from the heart. And they quoted me saying that it's harder to uh, capture human emotion in an image. And human emotion is what sells, like Michael, Human emotion is what sells photography, and human emotion is what uh, brings a lot of viewers in to uh, view our photography in, in galleries. So our mission has evolved for 15 years, and what we're going to do now is we're going to up the volume, and we're going to have every Sunday afternoon videoed and put on broadcast for Community Access TV in Southampton and East Hampton. And we're getting that 55-inch uh, uh, smart TV that we've been talking about for quite a while. And we're going to be having um, lecturers come in from various entities outside the valley. So we're really going to mix it up. Uh, so the first honorable mention goes to Jay Harder, Path to Encastic. Hi, my name is uh, Jay Harder. I'm uh, from Grammy, Connecticut, and I'm a member of the Grammy Camera Club. Mm -hmm. My image here, uh, I play a little path to dot, dot, dot. Uh, this image I took this last summer at a friend's house. And uh, what I'm trying to show is the foreground with a path leading into the darkness in the background. So you're kind of question, where does that path go? Uh, <clears throat> I did all the processing myself and the printing myself and the framing myself. Uh, obviously, it's just in a, a black and white, which is my favorite type of uh, photography. In this photograph, uh, I did something a little different. So this is new, something new that we're learning to do, and it's called encaustic. And what I've done is uh, put a layer of beeswax over the surface, uh, and then it, smear it on. So it gives it a real texture, almost a three-dimensional look to the image. Yeah, I'm very happy with it myself. Anyway. It's kind of... Another honorable mention, Bob Salasco. Uh, Oxalis Flowers. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm Bob Salasco. I'm in Robert's advanced DSLR seminar. Um, seminar. I was inspired particularly by this, and because uh, uh, these flowers are so pretty, even though they're so small and delicate. Um, I've done some flowers before, and a few of them like this with a. Uh, Light, side lighting and a black backdrop, but not many. Um, I take a wide variety of pictures, not just flowers. I take scenes, people, um, uh, sometimes sports events. So this is just one that intrigued me and, and trying to get it. This is actually the third time I tried this. I had, uh, uh, over a couple months, I tried it with uh, about, um, tried with, with it vertically and, and uh, just the pictures came out interesting. They're, they were exposed like this, but it didn't have the way they're sort of interleaved here, which hanging upside down gave me the, uh, that kind of uh, layout. Hi, my name is Glenn Corbier, and I've been um, photographing Massachusetts dragonflies um, in particular for about 15 years now. Um, I just find them to be very fascinating creatures and this is a wonderful area for dragonfly diversity and so I set out 15 years ago um, trying to photograph all the species that can be found in Massachusetts of which there's about 160 um, and more particularly photographing them in their natural habitats and what I found out way back then was a lot of dragonfly photography um, the dragonflies are netted. They can be very hard to find at rest and difficult to photograph. So my, my great-grandmother, when, 
when I was a very young lad, was scared to death of them. She called them sewing needles, and anytime she saw one, she would run away from them. I had a fascination with what can these, you know, dreadful creatures be, you know, and so I've always been interested in them ever since, and, and as I've learned more about them, um, they're just an incredible uh, insects, and they come in all different colors and shapes and sizes, and just beautiful insects. And, and, and it's like anything else too, persistence is the number one secret, you know, being out there all the time, spending a lot of time looking for them. Best in Show. Um, Best in Show gets a $125 bank check. Vern Wells, who's been with us for 15 years, Vern won second place uh, in our first Nature and the Pioneer Valley photo contest, February 2002, and he's been a great friend, and we love his work, and nobody does wildflowers like him. Basically, the way it was made was uh, panning the camera vertically uh, and using a fairly slow shutter speed, maybe a half second. And what it does is it blurs, blurs the image. And uh, there's really no way of knowing how that's going to come out until you get it on the computer. Uh, but uh, probably out of 100, 100 of these I take, I throw away 99 of them. <laughs> but it's, it's a real crapshoot. I mean, after you've taken a few, you get some idea, but... And it's on the right, I believe the last image, on the, on the right, uh, in, in Vern's uh, Granby, uh, Connecticut Camera Club. And Vern, thank you very much. Thank you. That's where I was Pleasure. 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 <laughs> <laughs> $100 gift certificate for framing. And this goes to an image called Untitled by Michael McGrath. Thank you. Thank you. With the children looking, you know, great photojournalism. Favorite, favorite image. Thank you. Uh, first place. Ah, another one up at the bird photography <laughs> class uh, workshop. Uh, Anne Ellie. Uh, first place. Uh, she wins a heavy, it's going to be 50, 60 pounds. I mean, I can barely like leg it. Uh, so I'll have to bring it into her home, I'm sure. Uh, new Canon Pixma Pro 100 Wireless Professional Inkjet Printer. I couldn't memorize this if I tried. And it's after the rain, and it's the one in the hallway where the intermediate seminar artwork is going into the Barry Wenzel uh, room on the right. It's the one with the triangles, mountains, and the, and the, and the mist coming up. And uh, uh, Ann Ellie is the most prolific photographer for the last nearly nine years, submitting images for the Daily Hampshire Gazette, Saturday Living Section, Valley Views. She has had 70 images published, and certainly others have had, and we, we love everyone who's had them published, but uh, Anne seems to be going out there every day and, and submitting more and more, so it's almost the Anne Ellie uh, column, if you will. Uh, this picture I, I call Going South. I was in New York last December. Um, actually, I was meeting my son who was there on business, and I was waiting for him to get done with his clients. This was about 9 o'clock at night. I was wandering around Midtown Manhattan. It was about a block, a block and a half south of Times Square on 7th Avenue. And I was wandering down the street. Actually, I was taking pictures of orange or the, the orange-yellow cabs going by. And I turned around, and here's this fellow sitting on the street. Um, I asked him if I could take his picture. He said yes. Um, I put five dollars in his cup, and um, sat down and took three quick shots, and and got up and walked on. And his little sign here says, "Traveling through broke." Um, hungry, need tickets south, anything helps. And that's why I call this going south, because going south has a number of different meanings. One is you know, when things are deteriorating, that's going south. And I thought fit 
the scene very well. What I find interesting is that the dog is better dressed than the fellow is. Uh, his clothes are torn and tattered and the dog looks like it has a, a new um, outfit on. A lot of you know, street photography, just photography in general, is an element of luck. You have to be there, you have to be at the right place at the right time. But the other element is you have to recognize it as the potential of an image um, and what it represents. Um, in this case also there's a, a um, store window in back and you can get reflections of people walking by and reflections of cars in the window so you get the sense that it's a, uh, it's a city. can't tell it's New York City but that's what it is. Um, so there is that element and of course um, just be able to um, quickly take a shot at night um, with, you know, without flash and be fairly unobtrusive about it. Um, there's some skill involved and finally some skill um, in what I call post-processing, uh, touching up an image afterwards. Um, what the eye sees and what the eye interprets uh, is very different from what the camera sees. The camera sees everything. The eye focuses on certain things. So when I saw him, I saw him and I saw the dog. I didn't see the surrounding of it. So in post-processing, I made some modification. I made it darker here so he would stand out because that's how my eye saw it. Um, so that's a lot of what fine, fine art photography is, is to um, create an image that's how we perceive it, not how the camera perceives it. Well done and a hand for all. What, what I'm going to do is uh, go around and I'm going to put up the names, uh, placards near the winning images. Uh, we're raising funds for Munson Art Council, so every name tag has a red dot with a figure. Kind of looks arbitrary, but that is a 20% figure that the gallery will donate to Munson Art Council with every investment of that particular uh, image. Uh, at 4 o'clock, I will go around writing on the cards what has sold. Uh, sometimes somebody walks in the room and they see an image that's sold and they go, I would have picked that one. Oh, the other ones are, I'm going home. So we didn't want that to happen. And, and yes, we have some conversations with, with a few uh, for various other reasons. But, uh, uh, and at five o'clock, any of the exhibiting photographers over here, you want, you're welcome to take your work home. Please let me know so I can carefully take it off, uh, off the walls. And we're here at six, and um, there's a lot more cider donuts, and I thank all of you. Have fun, thank you.